We're back at AWS reInvent 2021. It's the biggest hybrid event of the year, one of the few physical events, and uh, we're psyched to be here. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm really pleased to bring back the host emeritus, Stu Miniman, somebody I worked with side by side, Stu, for 10 years in a setting much like this, many like this. So, uh, Good to have you back. Dave, it's great to be with here with, with the CUBE team, you know, family here, uh, and uh, yeah, reInvent, Dave. I mean, this show, you know, I remember back, Dave, going to you after the first reInvent we talked, we're like, we got to be there. And I mean, you're, Dave, remember the first year we came, the second year of reInvent, this is the 10th year now, little card tables, gaming companies, all <laughs> this stuff. You know, you had Jerry Chen on yesterday, and you know, Jerry was compared, like, this is going to be like the next Microsoft, and we, bet heavy on this ecosystem, and yeah, we all think, yeah, this cloud thing, it might be real. Uh, you know, 20,000 people here, it's not the 50 or 75,000 that we had in like 2018, 2019, but this ecosystem, you know, what's happening in the cloud, you know, multiple versions of hybrid going on with the event and the services, but yeah, it's phenomenal stuff, and yeah, it's, it's so nice to see people. Well, it's, <laughs> as, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, it's something that we've talked about a lot over the years is, and you remember the early days of, of reInvent, and to this day, just very develop, strong developer affinity. The, the, AWS has done a tremendous job of building that up, and it's, it's their raison d'etre, it's how they approach the market. But now, you've been, been at Red Hat for a bit, obviously, uh, uh, as well, developer affinity. What have you learned, you know, specifically, as it relates to the cloud? You know, Kubernetes, hottest thing going. You, you know, we don't want to do an open shift commercial, but it's there, it's in the middle, you're in the middle of that mix. What have you learned generally? Yeah, well, Dave, to the comment that you made about, you know, developers here, it's developers and the enterprise. Uh, we used to have a joke and say, you know, enterprise developer is an oxymoron, but that, that line between developers doing stuff Early days of cloud, it was stealth computing. It's, they're often doing this stuff and central IT is not managing it. So how do the pieces come together? How do apps and infrastructure, how do those pieces come together? Um, and it's something that Red Hat's been doing a long time. So you know, you think about the Linux developer, they might have not have been the app developers, the people you know, building Linux and everything, but they had a decent close tie to it. Uh, I'm on the OpenShift team, what we do is cloud, Dave, and you know, we've got a partnership here with Amazon. We GA'd our native cloud service earlier this year. Uh, Andy Jassy helped name it. It is the beautifully named Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa. Um, but we've done OpenShift on AWS for more than five years. Basically since we were doing Kubernetes, it's been here because of course customers doing cloud, where are they? A lot of them are here in Amazon. So I've been loving talking to a lot of customers understanding how enterprise adoption's increasing, how we can enable developers and help them move faster. And yeah, I mean, the quick plug on OpenShift is our service, you know, we've got an SRE team that is going to manage all of that. Um, a friend of the program, Corey Quinn, uh, you know, says, you know, well, hey, an SRE team like that, because you don't want to manage, as an enterprise, you don't want to manage Kubernetes. Yeah, you need to understand some of the pieces, but what is important to your business is the applications, your data, and all those things, and managing the undifferentiating heavy lifting, that's one of the reasons you went to the cloud. So therefore, changing your model as to how you consume services in the cloud, and what are we seeing with Amazon, Dave? They're trying to build more solutions, simplify deployments, and offer more solutions, including with their, 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 their ecosystem. So I want to ask you, so you, you said, you know, enterprise developer is kind of an oxymoron. And I remember, you know, years ago, I used to hang around with a lot of heads of application development and insurance companies and financial services, pharmaceutical, and they didn't wear hoodies, but they didn't wear suits either. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, when I, when I talk to guys like Jeff Clark, for instance, he talks about we're building an abstraction layer or cross clouds, blah, 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 and it, which by the way, I think is the right strategy. I'm like, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll drink some of that Kool-Aid. And then when I come here, I, we talked to Adam Salipsky, John flew out, I was on the, on the chime. He goes, yeah, that's not, not hybrid. No, this is nothing like, it's not AWS. That's AWS is cloud. So, square that circle for me. Yeah. You know, because you're, you're in both worlds. And, sure. and certainly, you know, your strategy is to, to, to connect those worlds. Sure. Is and, that cloud? And, yeah, so, so, right. I mean, Dave, we spent years talking about, like, is private cloud really a cloud? You know, and when we started coming to the show, there is only one cloud. It is the public cloud, and Amazon is the paragon of- A lot of pejorative you know, fake what, what clouds there was. And and cloud washing. And, you know. Right, so today, you know, Amazon's putting lots of things into your data center and extending the cloud out to that environment. So that's cloud. That, 
That, that's we'll, cloud. We'll call that cloud. Right. Um, what about what, the reverse? What, what's happening at the edge? Is that cloud, is that an extension of what we said? From Amazon, if you look at not only Outpost, but wavelengths and local zones. Sure, let's say yes, and, that's and cloud, APIs, like that. primitives. Yeah. Okay, so, check. Right, so, you know, Dave, I've always thought, you know, cloud is an operating model, not a location, um, and the hybrid definition is not the old, I, I did an e-book on this, Dave, uh, earlier this year. It's not the decade-old NIST definition of an application that spans, because I don't get up in the morning as an enterprise and say, oh, let me look at the table of how much Google's charging me or Microsoft or Amazon, or wake up one morning and move from one cloud to the other. Portability, follow the sun type stuff, does it ever happen? Yes, but it is a rare thing. Applications oftentimes get pulled apart, so we've seen, if you talk about AI, train in the cloud, then transact and do things at the edge. If I'm in an aut autonomous vehicle or in a geosynchronous satellite, I can't be going back to the cloud to process stuff, so I get what I need and I process there. The same thing, hybrid. Oftentimes, I will do my transactional activity in the public cloud because I've got unlimited compute capability, but I might have my repository of data for many different reasons, governance or security or all these things in my own data center. So, parts of an application might live there, but I don't just span to go between the public cloud and my data center or the edge, it's specific architectural decisions as to how we do this. And by the way, I mean, the developer, they don't want to have to think about location. I mean, you know, my background, server, storage, virtualization, all that stuff, that was very much an infrastructure up look of things. Developers want to worry about their code and you know, somebody, it, make sure that it works in production. Okay, so let, let's litmus test that. If it's in the AWS cloud, and it's, I think it's true for you know, the other hyperscale clouds too, they don't have to think about location but they still have to think about location on-prem, don't they? Well, Dave, even so in the public cloud, you do need to worry about sometimes, it's like, okay, do I split it between availability zones? How do I build that? How do I do that? So there are things that we build on top of it. So we've seen okay. Amazon. Yeah, that's fair. It, so, data sovereignty, you have to think about, okay. A, a, absolutely, a, a, a lot of those things. So, Okay, but, so, but the experience in Germany is going to be the same as it is in DC, is it not? More or less. There are some differences. We'll see often Amazon okay, will so roll then, things then, out over time so, and what's available in yeah, GovCloud. For sure, cloud for sure. No, that's, that's definitely true. But, okay, but th that's, a, that's a maturity thing, right? Yeah. GovCloud can be, but ultimately they all sort of, sort of catch up. The, 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 is the, is the, I guess my question would be, is the delta between, let's say, you know, Fed uh, adoption and you know, uh, East Coast, is that delta, Right. narrower, significantly narrower than right. what you the, might see on-prem. The services are the same, sometimes for financial or political things there might be some slight differences, but, but yes, the cloud experience should be the same everywhere from Amazon. From is, it, is it from a standpoint of you know, hybrid, on-prem to cloud, across cloud? Um, many of the, the things when they go outside of the Amazon data centers, are limited or a little bit different, or you might have latency considerations yeah. uh, that, that you have to consider. So it's so then not, it's a tug of it war. It is not totally seamless because you know David David Floyer would you know tell us there you know you're, you're not going to fight physics. There are yeah. certain things that we need to have, and we've changed the way we architect things because it's no longer the bottleneck of the local you know SCSI connection that you yeah. have there. It is now. But the point uh, I'm making is know, that gets into a tug of war of, of, of our way is better than your way, and, yeah. it, and, and the answer is. Depends. It depends yeah, I mean, you, you've looked case. at some of these new databases that span globes and, and yeah. do, do things uh, uh, of the like. Another so. question. I don't know if you saw the Goldman Sachs deal this morning. Goldman Sachs is basically turning its business into a you know SaaS and pointing it to their hedge funds and allowing people to access their data, their tools, their software that they built for their own purposes, and now they're outselling it. Similar to what Nasdaq has done. Yeah. I can't imagine doing that without containers. Yeah. So. <laughs> Interesting point, I think. You, you know, uh, was it, God, at least six years ago now, uh, you know, Amazon launched serverless, and serverless was going to take over the world. I dug into the space for a couple of years, and you had the serverless camp, and you had the container camp. Um, last year at reInvent, I really felt a shift from Amazon's positioning that many of the abstraction layers and the tools that help you support those environments will now span between, you know, Lambda and containers. The container world has been adding serverless functionality. So Amazon does Fargate, uh, 
the open source community uses something called Knative. And just breaking this week, Knative was a project that Google started, and it looks like that is going to move over to the CNCF, so be part of the whole you know, Kubernetes right. ecosystem and everything like that. Oracle, VMware, yeah, IBM, Red Hat, all yep. heavily involved in Knative, and we're all excited to see that go into the CNCF. So the, the, the reason I say that, I've seen from Amazon, I actually, John and I, when we interviewed Andy Jassy back in 2017, I asked him a follow-up question because he said, if he was to build AWS in 2017, I would start with everything underneath it serverless. I would wonder if following up with Adam or Andy today, I'd said, would it be all serverless or would containers be a piece of it? Because sometimes underneath, it doesn't matter or sometimes it can be containers and serverless. It's a single unit in Amazon and when they position things, it's now that spectrum of unit, everything from the serverless through the containers through, um, James Hamilton wrote a blog post today about running Zen on Nitro and yeah. they have a migration service for a mainframe. So what do we know that one of the only things about IT is almost nothing ever goes away. I mean, it sounded like Amazon declared the, you know, coming soon the end of life of mainframe. Um, my, my friends at over at IBM might not be quite ready to you know, call that error over, but you know, we shall see. It's, all these things take time. <laughs> Everything in IT is additive. Um, I'm happy to see uh, it is very much usually an and world. When I look at the container and Kubernetes space, that is something that you can have a broad spectrum of applications. So some of my more monolithic applications can move over. My cool new data AI things, I can build on it. Microservices in between. And so you know, it's, it's a broad platform that spans the cloud, the edge, the data center. So that, that cloud operating model is easier to have consistency all the places that I go. Mainframes in the cloud. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I, and big banks buy uh, the next Z sight unseen. So I think, I think Amazon will be able to eat away at the edges of that. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be a, a, a major migration. They claim it, it, it their, their, big, their big thing is that you can't get COBOL programmers. I'm like, yeah, call DXC, you'll get plenty. But let's, let's talk about something more interesting. <laughs> so the last 10 years was a lot, of, a lot about IT transformation. There's, and there's a lot more room to grow there. I mean, the four big hyperscalers are going to do 120 billion this year. They're growing at 35 percent. There's a I know, maybe it's not a trillion, but there's a 500 billion dollar market that they're going after. Maybe more. It looks like there's there's a real move. You saw that was NAS, with Nasdaq, the Goldman deal, to really drive into business, deeper business integration, um, in addition to IT transformation. So, how do you see the next decade? of cloud, what should we be watching? Yeah, so one of the interesting trends, I mean, Dave, for years we covered big data, and big data felt very horizontal uh, in, in, a, in a, his approach to thing. Hadoop would take over the world. When I look at AI solutions, when I look at the edge computing technologies that, that happen, they're very vertically driven. So, uh, you know, our early customers in, in edge adoption tend to be like Telco with a 5G rollout, manufacturing in some of their environments, AI, every single industry has a whole set of use cases that they're using that go very deep. So, I think cloud computing goes from, you know, we talked about infrastructure as a service to it needs to be more, it, it is solutions, some of these pieces go together. You know, when, when, when uh, Adam got up on stage and talked about, you know, how many instance types, uh, you know, they have on an Amazon, it's, I mean, Dave, it's got to be, you know, 2X or 4X, more different instant types than if I went to go to HPE or Dell and buy a physical server for my environment. Yeah, so of course. we <laughs> need to have areas and guidance and blueprints and heck, use some of that ML and AI to help drive people to the right solutions because we definitely have the paradox of choice today. So I, I think you will find uh, so some gravity moving towards some of these environments. Graviton's been really interesting to watch. Obviously that Annapurna uh, acquisition, you know, should Huge. go down as one of the, the, the biggest ones, uh, you know, in the, yeah. in the cloud era. No lack of optionality to your point. And then, so I guess to the point of deeper business integration, that's the big question. Will Amazon provide more solution abstractions? They, they certainly do with Connect. We didn't hear a ton of that this show. So, uh, but an interesting last note. Last thought, we're going to wrap. Yeah, so um, the, the article that, that you and John Furrier wrote uh, after meeting with Adam, the thing that caught my eye is discussion of community and ecosystems. And one of the things coming after some you know, big communities out there, like you, know, you and I live through the VMware ecosystem in that very tight community, there are forming 
little areas of community here um, in this group, but it's not a single cloud community. There are those focus areas that, that they have, and I do love to see, I mean, obviously working for Red Hat, you know, t talking about the ecosystem support. I was very happy to hear Adam mention Red Hat in the keynote as what, you know, one of the key hybrid partners there. So, for Amazon to get from the 60 million to the, say the 60 billion to the trillion dollar mark down the road, um, it it's going to take a village and uh, we're happy to be a part of it. All right, Stu, hey, great to have you back. Enjoy the rest of the show. This is, uh, let's see, day three, we're wrapping up. Uh, we're here again tomorrow, so check it out. Uh, special thanks to Obviously AWS is our anchor sponsor, and of course, AMD for sponsoring the editorial segments of our event. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in tech coverage. See you tomorrow. <laughs>